Mike, what do frogs, pigs, dogs, orcas, whales, moose, bears, lobsters, and the platypus all have in common? Uh, just that you listed them, Ben? Is, it, is that it? It's true, but they also were all represented in the original line of Beanie Babies. And that's how we're going to celebrate 100 episodes of our show, right? We're going to talk about a super weird fad in the 1990s that perfectly coincided with the rise of the internet. Now that I've said that, pretty perfect. Don't ever doubt my wisdom, Mike. Uh, okay. <laughs> While you think about a way to apologize, I'll start in on our topic. Beanie Babies, of course, are a line of stuffed toys created by H. Ty Warner and his company, Ty Inc., based outside of Chicago. I did not know until we started working on this episode that it was Ty and not T.Y. I always just thought the company was called T.Y., uh, Ty was the first company, believe it or not, this makes it even more interesting, to launch a business-to-consumer website way back in 1995. Now, I bet you didn't know that. This was just when 1.4% of Americans were actually using the internet. As we'll see, much about Ty and the Beanie Babies brand was way ahead of its time. Definitely. Some early versions of the website are still available through the Internet Archive, and they're a real treat to look through. I have one in the show notes you can go check out. It is as colorful and as garish as you can imagine. Ty Warner the person is a bit of a mystery. It is known that he spent all of his resources starting the company and that it paid off handsomely, as a 75-year-old is worth an estimated $2.4 billion right now. He doesn't take interviews, including during a legal fight with the IRS a few years ago. We did find an interview he did with People Magazine back in 1999, and we again have that in the show notes for you. Honestly, reading through it, he seems like a pretty regular guy, just one who really values his privacy. But he is a person with an absolute laser-focused eye for marketing, and making something go viral is pretty unparalleled, like the ability that he has to do that, which is something we're going to get into. For now, let's talk about Beanie Babies. The original set included the nine animals that Stephen mentioned. Identification tags are a big part of Beanie Baby lore. Since the first toys, every character has had two tags. One is called the Tush Tag, made of fabric found at the bottom of the animal, the rear the rear of the animal. Is it Tush? I think you're looking for Tush. Tush? Yeah. Tush? Yeah, Tush is what you're tush? looking for. Tush there. Tag. Tush the Tag. The Butt Tag. The Butt Tag. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, of course, is the iconic heart-shaped Swing Tag, usually attached to the animal's ear or something, you know, towards the front of its body. And this is what features the famous, infamous Beanie Babies logo, the Thai logo, right? Mm -hmm. Between 1994 and 1996, the swing tags had a to and from blank on them, so you could use them as gifts, right? So I could write to Stephen from Mike and give Stephen oh. a toffee, uh, which there should be, right? There should be a toffee uh, Beanie Baby, our, our mascot. There's, I'm sure there's definitely a dolphin Beanie Baby, at least. Uh, starting in early 1996, though, the tags included four line poems related to the Beanie Baby and a date of birth for the toy. The first 136 poems were written by a Thai Inc. employee named Lena Trevidi. The story goes that she thought the two from tags were pretty boring and that a birth date and a poem would make the toys more interesting. She shared an example poem that she had written for Stripes the Tiger, which I will now read. Yeah, of course. Go on then. Hey, don't stand in the way of art. Okay, here it goes. Stripes was never fierce nor strong. So with tigers, he didn't get along. Jungle life was hard to get by, so he came to his friends at Thai. I don't like that poem. He he found a new life with new friends. I know it's not the context of the I don't like like the the amount of syllables in the lines. It doesn't mm. work. I don't like the rhythm of that poem. Okay. I should tell you, Mike, that I have a business expense because the website I found that on was done fully in Comic Sans and I burned the laptop I was using. That's perfectly fine. You know what? Actually, we should do an episode about Comic Sans. Oh, we should do. That's got to be a good episode for the future. All right. I'm putting it on the list. I'll look forward to my thanks at the end of that episode. This episode of Ungenius is brought to you by Pingdom from Solar Winds. Do you have a website? And does that website have things like shopping carts, registration forms, contact us pages? If you answered yes to these questions, if you're thinking about your website right now, then you need Pingdom. Nobody wants their critical website transactions to fail. That means a bad experience for your users and could mean lost business. But the good news is you can set up transaction monitoring with Pingdom. 
It will alert you when things like cart checkout forms and login pages fail before they affect your customers and your business. Pingdom will let you know the moment that any of these fail in whatever way is best for you. You can customize how you're alerted and who is alerted depending on the severity of the outage. Pingdom cares about your users having the smoothest site experience possible, and if disaster strikes, you'll be the first to know. It's super easy to get started. Just go to pingdom.com slash RelayFM right now for a 14-day free trial with no credit card required. And when you sign up, use the code UNGENIUS at checkout to get a huge 30% off your first invoice. Our thanks to Pingdom from SolarWinds for the support of the show and Relay FM. All right, so we've spoken about the toys. Let's talk about why we're talking about them themselves. It's the collectability. Yeah, if, if people didn't collect these, it would be a pretty boring topic, right? There's another toy in the 90s that no one remembers. But to your point, you know, we're talking about 95, 96. These things just really took off. And Ty Inc. was really smart about it. New designs were often sold in limited quantity, and often individual stores would just receive a handful of stock, making the toy seem even more rare. The company also retired designs pretty often, taking popular models off the market to further increase their desirability. This all came to a head in 1999 when, get this, Thai Inc. announced that production of all Beanie Babies would cease. A few months later, as the public grew more and more interested in the story, the company announced a vote to see if it should keep producing the toys. Who was going to say no? Uh, the vote was like, <laughs> it was like, no, I cannot allow this. Do not come back. <laughs> uh, the vote was overwhelmingly in favor, and Thai Inc. went on to make an estimated six billion more dollars from the toys absolutely genius i totally remember this it was on the news people were talking about it it was a big deal it was mania it was like a fever mm -hmm. and all of this was going on as the internet itself was becoming more popular we mentioned that at the start of the episode it wasn't really in very many homes right like not 1.4 percent we said of americans had the internet at that point but that was very quickly changing and ebay was quickly becoming ground zero for beanie baby collecting apparently at one point 10 percent of all transactions on ebay were beanie babies Whoa, that doesn't seem possible. That's wild. I mean, you can imagine there probably wasn't a ton of, like a lot of traffic on eBay, but not like it is now. Sure. And I guess if that was the internet's collecting thing, mm -hmm. all of this led to many people using Beanie Babies as an investment opportunity, oh which is another interesting angle to the story. Maybe the most famous example of this is Chris Robinson, who captured his family story in a short film named Bankrupt by Beanies. It's like eight minutes long. It's on YouTube. We link to it in the show notes. You should definitely go watch it. You should watch it. Uh, Chris's dad started collecting at the peak of the fad, but it wasn't known at this time that it was, in fact, the peak. Right. The plan was to use this collection to fund college for Chris and his siblings. His dad ended up learning the release schedule and what stores would get what. Over time, it became an obsession and he even had friends, neighbors, or more that he would rope in to help him collect more and more and more Beanie Babies. I read one thing that uh, someone thought that maybe his dad had like an inside connection with the company because he would be able to get things on launch day. And like, it's it's really moving. It seems like he befriended store owners. Yeah, he, he clearly was playing the game. It may have started out as this idea, but it seemed to become an obsession pretty fast in a way that it ended up just being something I think he enjoyed doing. Yeah, I mean, his long-term goal was five complete collections, one for each of his kids. The plush animals slowly filled their house, attic space, and he had to come up with a detailed inventory system to keep everything straight. Over time, the family realized that the investment just wasn't going to pay off as online prices plummeted as the 2000s rolled on. And as of 2013, the family had over 15,000 Beanie Babies. That makes me sad. It is kind of sad, actually. And I bet that the Robinson family is not the only family of a story just like this one. Oh, I'm sure. It's such a good example of showing how these things hit at exactly the right time. Beanie Babies became a national craze and spread like wildfire thanks to the internet. Thanks to things like eBay and forums and collector groups. They all connected people from all walks of life, from all parts of the world who were interested in the toys and the company behind them. 
the company realized that and played right into it. It was a, a, a virtuous circle that made Thai Inc. worth billions. All right, I'd like to thank Carter for sending this in. This was uh, interesting and kind of sad. I feel kind of sad at the end of this episode. If you want to read more about Beanie Babies, about this family, a bunch of other stuff, we have a lot of things in the show notes. They're in your podcast app of choice, or you can find them on the web at relay.fm slash ungenius slash 100. It is our 100th episode. Thank you so much for listening to Ungenius. It's a lot of fun uh, making the show, so thank you for tuning in every other week. Uh, if you have your own topic that you would like to send in, you can do so from the website. There's an email link, or you can do it on Twitter. The show is at Ungenius. You can find Mike online as I-M-Y-K-E. And you can find me on Twitter as I-S-M-H. And until our next collectible craze, Mike, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Adios.